All right, on the less newsy but more fun side of things, um, which uh, I, I, I was sent this link to uh, something called enhanced.org. And what enhanced.org wants to do is create an Olympics, an Olympics, basically an international competition. But for athletes that are enhanced, it's called enhanced.org, i.e. athletes that are using the latest biological knowledge, uh, whether it is uh, uh, steroids or whether it is other types of, um, uh, of drugs or whether it is just, uh, I don't know, but, you know, uh, uh, other forms of... Uh, uh, performance enhancing technologies technologies that are safe that are safe and what they're saying is they, they want to let's see how fast we can actually be let's see how many world records we can break they say welcome to the enhanced games the ultimate demonstration of what the human body is capable of I, I think it's fascinating uh, he, uh, they say the world's best athletes enhanced. And they say when 44% of athletes already use performance enhancements, it's time to safely celebrate science. Safely celebrate science. I don't know if this means augmentation as well. And what it is, they, you know, they, they, they have a little thing about, you know, uh, uh, first of all, they're going to pay the athletes. They have a thing about science is real. You know, it's real and it can be safe. Uh, it will be, this is all going to be required that the uh, enhancement be medically supervised. Uh, they'll have approved substances uh, with regular clinical supervision. Uh, they'll have prohibited substances, substances that are either unhealthy or what they call against the spirit of sport. Uh, these are going to be uh, incur significant harms to self or others involve irreversible body modifications, are highly addictive. That's good. I like that. The unhealthy part is lack of demonstrated health benefits are classified as USA Schedule 1 or UK Class A drugs. Um, and so what is performance enhancing, according to them? It refers to substances that enhance speed, strength, endurance, and competition preparation, provide Accelerate support regulating the effects of a primary substance during after a substance cycle. Accelerate recovery from injury or illness. Optimize health after extreme effort. Comp uh, that is competition, training camps, or exhibition. I mean, it is a little ridiculous and somewhat arbitrary that there's certain drugs that athletes can take and certain drugs that they cannot take. Certain things that they can do if they get injured, certain things they cannot. Uh, it, it, I mean, what they're saying is, if it's healthy, if, 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 if it's not unhealthy, and if it's not going to do harm, why not? Why is it cheating? It's not cheating. Any more cheating than, um, uh, you know, you have a uh, scientist designing your workout routine. There's nothing cheating about this. This is science-based. Let's make the human beings better, stronger, more effective. It's not cheating at all. Uh, it's only cheating when it's banned and then you use it in spite of being banned. Okay, then it's cheating because when you sign up for sport, you sign up under certain conditions. One of those conditions is you don't use banned uh, substances and that's fine. And that, then it's cheating if you do because you're violating a contract. But if, if the contract's different. Um, they'd actually argue that this would be safer. Um, this would be healthier because you'd actually give your patient, recovering and stuff, the best drugs and, and, and treatment available, not the ones that won't be, you know, caught by the screeners. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, you, know you, you will be advancing research about what actually enhances our performance ability, 
uh, they will you'll develop uh, you know this this whole area of research will develop uh, biomarkers for health. Uh, this could be enormously beneficial in terms of advancing research, advancing thinking, and advancing monitoring of health enhancing treatments. So I think this is fantastic. I mean, I, I love this. Um, they're going to pay the athletes. So elite athletes uh, today live in poverty. 58% of them uh, are, not, do not, are not financially stable because they have to practice, 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 practice. You know, they don't have time for regular work. Uh, you know, elite athlete in, in, in Australia, for example, 46% of them uh, make less than, uh, less than $15,000 a year. I assume that's Australian dollars. Uh, so athletes who compete in these games are going to be paid. Uh, <clears throat> athletes to set a new world record for the 100-meter sprint and the 50-meter freestyle will receive $1 million. $1 million. <laughs> Um, and, and other world records, I guess, will receive small amounts, but $1 million. Um, anyway, they, they, they're arguing that they're reinventing sports. They're looking at athletics, aquatics, gymnastics, combat, wrestling, and so, and, and strength sports. Uh, when are the first games? The first enhanced games are scheduled for the second half of 2025. We, uh, we are in the process of negotiating with host cities and will announce the dates and locations this summer. The building, the future of sport, uh, you know, it takes time, they say. Uh, what I found was interesting. I mean, this is a, basically a startup. Uh, so uh, uh, let me just see. Uh, somewhere here they had, oh, our team. They had the investors. So um, uh, they, they have uh, uh, founder and president uh, is, a, is a D'Souza, not the D'Souza, a D'Souza. He's got a Ph.D., in intellectual property law, he's not even in, uh, in, in any kind of physiology. Um, it, you know, these all look like people who are uh, experienced entrepreneurs in one way or another, uh, Europeans, Americans. Uh, my guess is there's probably an Aussie here. Uh, who are the investors? This is interesting. Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel has invested money in this enterprise. Uh, and uh, Christian Angermeyer, I don't know Christian Angermeyer, uh, but he is a venture capitalist. And this one, this one is pretty famous. But uh, ba, I can't pronounce his name, but he is a famous guy. Balaji Srivan Sri, <laughs> Srinivasan. Srinivasan. Um, uh, and uh, he was the he was the first chief technology officer at Coinbase and a graduate uh, with a PhD from Stanford University. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is good. They have a scientific and medical advisory board. I, I, there was a guy, I, I, let me tell you the story and then we'll go to your questions. Uh, there was a philosopher that I met years and years and years ago, more than 10 years ago, I think. And uh, he gave a talk at a Montpellerin Society meeting and his talk was basically, remember, he's a philosopher, he's an expert in ethics. His talk was, it is our ethical responsibility to make ourselves the best that we can be. We can be. And therefore, if that involves taking drugs in order to get better, then we should take drugs. If that involves enhancing us with medicines, drugs, we should do that. If that involves enhancing us with chips in the brain or or, or we should do that. And he was advocating for exactly this. He was advocating that athletes should not be penalized for taking uh, enhancements. He was advocating for, um, uh, uh, for actually uh, kind of the, the, the moral responsibility the individuals have to live, to make the most of their life. Now, I, I, he didn't understand the role of reason, and it, it, there are a lot of differences between him and objectivism. But... So he had this view of bioethics, that, of bioengineering and bioethics that was like, let's go, let's do this stuff. Let's figure out what works and what doesn't work. What, let's figure out what makes us more productive, what makes us uh, enjoy ourselves more. Uh, let, let's figure out, what, you know, without doing harm, 
how we enhance human beings. And uh, we ended up striking a friendship. I, I, so I went up, up to him after the talk. I mean, the talk was very controversial. A lot of people disagreed. And I went up to him afterwards and congratulated him on it. And we ended up spending uh, quite a bit of time talking. And uh, he's a professor at Oxford University, or was. I don't know if he's still there. Julian Sevalescu. Sevalescu is a Romanian name, but I think he was born in, in um, Australia. Anyway, Julian, uh, yeah, I, I visited a couple of times at Oxford. And we actually did a seminar. We did a seminar together. Tara Smith was there as well. And Alan Gotthelf. Uh, Alan Gotthelf was there. So Alan and Tara and myself representing objectivism. And then uh, he and some of his graduate students. Uh, we did a, we did a, a whole um, conference. Uh, I mean, not conference, seminar at Oxford University. This is, well, I know exactly when it was because it was my, it was my 50th birthday. So this is 13 years ago. Wow, it's a long time ago, 13 years ago. It was on my 50th birthday, I was at Oxford, and we did a seminar on sports and philosophy. And it was really good. It was really fun. It was really interesting. He was a really interesting guy. I've kind of lost touch with him since then, sadly. Um, I'll try to find out where he is. This, this has reminded me of him. I'll try to find out uh, where he is. He is he, Julian Savalescu. He was Australian, yes. But he was teaching at Oxford, and I think he had a joint appointment with the university in, in uh, Australia. 